Hey Outsiders, I'm Mike from Outside Chronicles, and I'm going to give you five reasons why I think trekking poles should be one of your 10 essentials. And if you're already using trekking poles, stick around for five tips on how to use them more effectively. Reason number one is stability. Humans evolved as bipeds. Our brains got bigger, and this allowed us to run longer and outsmart our prey at the cost of stability. Our center of gravity got taller, and we lost two points of contact with the ground but we're a pretty smart species, so we can use trekking poles to regain those four points of contact to gain our stability. This is super effective in wet and muddy conditions, anytime you're rock hopping, and definitely in snow and ice. The other part of trekking poles that helps with stability is when you're carrying a heavy pack. Now your center of gravity is higher, and now you've got some weight on that center of gravity and you tend to lean and fall in different directions, having that four points of contact with your trekking poles really helps with stability. Reason number two is trekking poles help with fatigue and make you a more efficient hiker. By having those four points of contact, you're now distributing the weight of your body as well as your pack across those four points. So you're using your shoulders and your arms to help you with your hike. This takes a lot of load off of your hips as well as your knees. I find it very effective to use trekking poles to go uphill because now you're using your shoulders and arms to help you gain elevation. I also find trekking poles very uh, effective going downhill because it takes a lot of the brunt off of your knees. Now to get the maximum efficiency out of your trekking poles, you're going to want to use the cross country style walk where you're alternating foot and pole, foot and pole. It's very awkward if you try to do pole and foot at the same time. It just doesn't feel natural. But what I see a lot of people do is not actually using the poles to propel themselves forward. So what you want to do is actually get your poles at like a 70 degree angle and push. So when you take that step, your pole should be kind of at a 70 degree angle and you're actually pushing. I see a lot of people putting their trekking poles out in front of them and just kind of walking with them. That doesn't do a whole lot. Use those trekking poles to actually propel you forward or up that mountain. Now, if you're getting to steep elevation, what I suggest is using um, both at the same time to actually pull yourself up that mountain. Reason number three is safety. I go back to reason one and two. You're more stable and you're getting less fatigued over the course of the hike. So that'll allow you to prevent injury. Also, when you're constantly catching yourself, whether you have a pack on or you're rock hopping, that becomes both physically and mentally draining, which can lead to an injury. Reason number four is stream crossings. Wet rocks are extremely slippery. And in my area, we have a lot of shale creeks. So those, when they're wet, are like ice. So you have that extra confidence of your trekking poles to walk through that water. Moving water can also be pretty intimidating. So that also gives you a lot of stability with that water coming past you. I also find that trekking poles are useful to find the depth of the water. Sometimes the water is pretty turbid and you can't see the bottom. So you can actually figure out where your best place is to put your foot. And finally, just like finding the bottom of the creek, in the winter, trekking poles are super effective on creek crossings that are frozen or you think they're frozen. You can actually use your trekking poles to pound the ice and figure out what is the best place for you to plant your foot where the ice isn't going to drop out on you. And finally, if you have to cross using a wet log, Trekking poles can really help out if you can get them down to the creek bed. Now you've got four points of contact. If not, you definitely can use it to balance yourself as you move forward on that log. Reason number five is improvised uses. Trekking poles have a lot of different improvised uses. The first one that comes to mind is in first aid where you can use it to splint a leg or an arm to stabilize a broken bone. There's a lot of popular tents now that are getting rid of their poles and using your trekking poles as the tent poles. You can also use your trekking poles in conjunction with an emergency tarp to create an emergency shelter. I've used trekking poles as a selfie stick to get that really cool angle going over the cliff or just as a selfie stick. And finally, 
I hope it never happens to you. You can use trekking poles to ward off an animal. I have heard people using trekking poles to stop a charging dog. I hope you never have to stop a charging bear. So hopefully I've given you enough reasons to go out and buy trekking poles. And if you already own trekking poles, here's some tips to use them more effectively. So the first tip is how to actually use this wrist strap. A lot of people will put their hand in like this and hold on to the trekking pole. What this does is it constantly makes you hold on to that trekking pole, causing fatigue in your forearm. The other bad part about this is if you're going to fall, you let go of your trekking pole to brace yourself. Now you're going to fall on top of your trekking pole, which can damage your thumb or break your trekking pole. And a more effective way of using this strap is to come in from the bottom. And what this does is when you're holding your trekking pole, you can actually plant it and get good purchase and good stability without even grabbing onto that trekking pole. This will help you quite a bit with fatigue over the course of a hike. The other reason I do this is if you fall, now your hand is free to brace your fall without falling on top of your trekking pole. Give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this a better way to hold your trekking pole? Tip number two is change the length of your trekking pole based on the terrain. If you're doing mostly flat hiking, what you're gonna to wanna to do is adjust your pole so it's a 90 degree angle from your upper arm to your forearm to where you're holding on to that pole. I see a lot of people making their poles too tall. And what this does is it actually increases fatigue and it prevents you from doing that 70 degree propulsion I showed earlier in the video. Now, if you're going uphill, mostly uphill, like climbing a mountain, you're gonna to wanna to make your poles a little bit shorter because when you plant your poles, they're always gonna be a little bit higher than your feet. Same holds true if you're going mostly downhill. You're gonna to wanna to make your poles just a little bit longer because your poles are always gonna be a little bit in front of you and your feet are always gonna be higher. Now, you're not gonna to wanna to adjust your poles for every ravine or anything like that. But if you're mostly going uphill, mostly going downhill, mostly gonna be flat, adjust the length of your pole appropriately. Tip number three is put Gorilla Tape around your poles. I tend to put Gorilla Tape around any kind of round surface. And if you notice, I have Gorilla Tape on both of these poles. It comes in handy, both to repair some of your gear or some gear of some fellow hikers. And tip number five is remove this rubber end. This is only for streets and sidewalks. If you pull this off, the trekking pole is gonna have a carbide tip, which is amazing for rocks and roots on the trail. So get rid of this when you're on the trail. I hope I convinced you that trekking poles should be one of your 10 essentials and showed you some ways that you can use your trekking poles more efficiently. I also hope you liked this video. If you did, click that like button and if you want to see other outdoor adventures, gear reviews, how-tos, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside.